We are now ready to start chapter 9. And the really good news about that is we're only going to do two units or two sections of chapter 9, just section 3 and section 4. And then we're going to combine those together just so we can know when we use which part. So that'll make sense as we go on. But um, So we're going to start with uh, section 9.3. And to get thinking about what we're going to be doing here, I want you to look at these proportion problems and just think for a second about how you would solve these problems. And these are typical proportion problems. So you have um, basically three knowns and one unknown. And I want you to think of just a, a quick, easy way of how you can solve for A. Because I know that typically we would say, well, if we multiply both sides by sine of 65, then the sine of 65 cancels out. And then if we multiply by sine of 28, then the 28 cancels out. But we want to think about doing that a little bit faster. I mean, I mean, teach you a really cool trick on how to do this quick. So stop the video for a second and think about it for a second and then turn it back on. Okay, so hopefully you figured out a quick way. And if you didn't figure it out, I'm going to show you one that works so nice. And it does use cross multiplication, but we're just going to do it without even writing the problem down. You're just going to love this. It's good. So what we do is we identify the unknown, and then we multiply the other two knowns. So the unknown would be in this ratio here. So we multiply those two together. And because this is going to work good in my calculator, because if I go sine 28, 21, it's going to think that you're taking the sine of 2,821. Then you could go sine of 28 times 21, but sometimes calculators will multiply the 28 times the 21 first before they take the sine. So what I want you to do is do the 21 first. So in your calculators, you would go 21 times the sine of 28. And that way, your calculator knows what you're trying to do. Then hit enter or equals, because I want you to, you know, not goof up on this next part. Because then if we divide by the sine of 65, it might mess up. So, you know, if you want, it might divide the sine of 65 into the 28, so it's just going to be a mess. So just do 21 times sine of 28, find an answer, and then divide that answer by the sine of 65. Find the answer, and we're always going to round our answers to the nearest tenth. Because in my calculator, I got 10.8780, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to round that to 10.9. Okay, so number two. I'm going to walk you through it again one more time. So you take, multiply these two together. There's the unknown. So I go 15 sine of 94, find an answer. Divide that by sine of 40. And my answer is 23.27901, blah, blah, blah. So I round that to 23.3. Next one. I noticed my unknown is right there, so I'm going to multiply these two. So I'm going to go 63 times the sine of 9. Find an answer, then divide that by sine of 105, and you get 10.2. Okay, next one. There's the unknown. This time the unknown is in the bottom, and it's also with the sine. So this one's a little bit different. We're still just going to multiply our two knowns right here. So we're going to go 54 sine of 73. 54 sine 73 is the same thing as 54 times sine of 73. You just don't need to put that calculator key in. Find an answer. Divide it by 61. Only this time I get a decimal. It's 0.8465. So that's Sine of B is equal to 0.84, blah, blah, blah. But I want to find out what B is equal to. So in my calculator, 
I take the inverse sine or sine to the negative 1, and on my calculator it's blue. So I hit the blue button, sine, and then I can do second answer, and it puts my answer from the previous problem in. So sine negative 1 of the answer is 57.8399, which rounds to the nearest tenth of 57.8. Okay, next one. This time we're also looking for A, and we're going to go 16 times the sine, so 16 sine of 81. Find the answer, divide it by 16. I get a decimal. I do the inverse sine of my answer, and I get 81. And the last one. First, I'm going to take 110 sine of 36, find an answer, divide it by 85. I get 0 0.76066, blah, blah, blah. So I want to find the inverse sine of that answer, and I get 49.5. So if you haven't done so already, I want you to try these because you really need to practice using your calculator to do these problems. Okay? Once you've done that, move on to the next page. Now, what we're looking at is a problem that will come up periodically in life of how do we find the area of a triangle. So just look at this triangle for a second and think about that. So what if we're trying to find the area of this triangle and all we know are the angles and the sides? Now, in the past, we've only been able to find areas of triangles if they're right triangles. But this is not a right triangle. I'm going to show you a really cool trick that that's what this section is about. We are going to kind of pretend like we're drawing in this height or this um, altitude right here. And if you think about this, the area of the triangle is one-half the base times the height. But if all we know on the triangle are the outside edges and the angles, we don't know that height right there. So if we take one-half base times the height, and then we multiply top and bottom of that equation by a C, well, the hypotenuse divided by side C is the same thing as sine of a. Because remember, sine of a is hypotenuse divided by c. So I can replace that h over c by sine of a times b and c, which gives us a really cool equation. And that is how we find the area of the triangle if it's not a right triangle, or even if it is a right triangle, you can still use this. But there are three ways to calculate the area. So if you're given the three angles and the three sides, you can use sine of A times B times C, cut it in half, and that is the area. Or you can use angle B. If you use angle B, it's the sine of B times A times C, cut it in half, that's the area. And the same thing with C. Sine of C times A times B, cut it in half or multiply by one half. Notice that the angle that we're using is always different than the two sides that we multiply together. And this goes back to the geometry concept that when we label the, the triangle, let me erase this so you can see it better here. When we label the triangle, Side A is always opposite angle A. Side B is always opposite angle B. And side C is always opposite angle C. So keep that in mind. That's how we always do the triangles in geometry. Now be sure you put these um, areas formulas in your notes. There's a little spot for it if you print it off the notes that goes along with this section. Um, area of a triangle. You don't need to write all three if you can remember that this the angle will always be different than the two sides. So if you have angle A, you'll have side B and C. If you have angle B, you'll have side A and C. 
And if you have angle C, you'll have side A and B. All right, so what does this mean when we're solving equations? Find the area of triangle ABC, round your answer to the nearest tenth, turn the video off, maybe make a guess, try these recordings, or try these problems, see if you can figure it out, then turn the video back on. The first one would look like this. The formula would be one half the sine of 60 degrees, because that's the angle that we know, and we know angle B, and we know side A and C, so that's what we multiply together. Then we just grab a calculator, and we go 1 half times sine of 60 times 19 times 14. Be sure that you're multiplying those together, and you get 115.2. Everyone should try that with their calculators just to make sure that they are putting them in correctly and figuring out how your calculators will work with that. Number two. The formula would be 1 half sine of 29 degrees times 38 times 31. That equals 285.6. Example number 3 in your notes. Find the area of the triangle. Round to the nearest tenth. Round your answer to the nearest tenth. Take a second. Try this on your own. Turn the video back on. The formula would be 1 half sine of 135 degrees times 17 times 19. And you should get the answer of 114.2 when you round it to the nearest tenth. Well, what if we um, want to find the side of a non-right triangle? So, you know, we've been talking about, like, before, we've always had used right triangles. But, you know, what if we have a non-right triangle, but we want to find the side of it? Because if it was in a right triangle, we could use Pythagorean theorem. But if it's not right, we can't use that. So here brings up our essential question. Our essential question is, the law of sines is going to help us. And what is the law of sines? I'm going to have you do an activity right now, or just a little activity on your own here. We're going to complete the table for the triangle shown. And I want you to look at this and see what, what you find out. So here we have a triangle, so just pause the video and copy down these values in your notes. So you have a table in your notes. And you're going to fill in the answers down here. So where it says angle A, you'll put 29.74. And angle B, 97.13, and so on. Side A, you will put 303.16. And side B, you'll put 6.32, and so on. Then take sine of A and divide it by A. So you're going to take the sine of A, and I'll help you with this first one, sine of a, which is sine of 29.74, and you're going to divide it by 3.16. You're going to get a decimal value, and I want you to write that in right there. So go ahead and complete this whole table, and when you've got it completed, then turn on the video. So after you've completed the values, you should have gotten these numbers right here. And what is it that you notice? Well, hopefully you notice this. The sine of A over A, and the sine of B over B, and the sine of C over C was all the same value. Now that's pretty cool. I'm going to take a second. We're going to, um, in the next video, we're going to start by, with a GeoGebra activity. Activity.